Now, the news. Absolutely. Been a lot happening, obviously. Um, you had recent experience of this. We've just seen it. French police have been having a bit of a crackdown on speeding on their motorways. Now, they have been focusing a little bit on British drivers, it must be said. In a recent weekend, out of 126 drivers stopped, uh, 113 were, were actually British drivers, which is <laughs> charming. But, I mean, they... they well, did... They, are you saying... There was, I'm not coach? joking. They came alongside me, and I looked across, thought, I'm in trouble here, and they were just going... <laughs> you really thought they were... Did it not occur in your big, woolly head that maybe it was a trap? No, you see, I trust the French. <laughs> you see, so they weren't uh, a bit broke. <laughs> exactly. You know? I mean, what sort of trap? Well, I mean, carry on, Mr. Clarkson, and then there's a battery of cameras just under the next bridge to nobble you. No, you see, that's not possible. You're not thinking. Because the French still use policemen no. to monitor speeders. It's a crazy idea, and but not I like cameras. It. <laughs> it's quaint. Yeah, it's old fashioned. It works. Yeah. Um, as you know, all you ever get on your email in the morning is Would you like a bigger genital? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And a friend has sent you something that isn't funny, that takes half an hour to download. However, we were sent an email the other day, it was quite funny, it and it had a car in it, so we thought, well, we'll share it with you. There, a pigeon look, and a Ford Sport Cam. <laughs> Have you tried to get this fantastic. You can get well, you won't get in because you're they built that car. Jesus is here. <laughs> <laughs> we never knew. Wow. Who have we booked as the guest this week? Maybe he's not supposed to be on yet. Is he the guest? <laughs> something, wouldn't it? We'd get some viewers how did, you do, how did you do on the track, Jesus? At least I'm not too tall for my hair, eh, Jeremy? <laughs> no! Hey! And Jesus... He's good. And Jesus, Jesus is funny! Is rich. Jesus has just said that he's not too tall for his hair. He'd edit me out anyway, wouldn't he? Shut up now, Jesus. <laughs> That's probably enough from That's Jesus. That's enough, really, from Jesus. <clears throat> just James is going to speak. Just a word of caution about caravans to uh, motorcyclists. You'll be interested in this. Uh, on a sort of large capacity motorcycle, it is of course very easy to overtake a caravan. You just need a very small stretch of road. You spot it, you move out, you think, great, down two cog, bang, pin it, you pass the mistral. In the twinkling of an eye, you knock it up a cog, you've got it pinned wide open, and you're going past the Rover 75. And it's then you remember that ruddy great sticky out mirror thing <laughs> that they stick on the driver's yeah. door. And, that, and the, I did this the other day, and the first thing I knew about it was when I had this vision of myself coming towards me at a closing speed of 200 miles an hour. I said, hey, there's a bloke on a bike like mine. Right. <laughs> He's screaming. Yeah. You know, the lovely thing is, is that the caravan club always says, doesn't it, that our remembers always pull over when they see a huge queue of traffic behind. Rubbish. Ever they happened don't. to you? Is, they Has anyone don't. here ever had a caravan pull over and let you go by? No. No. Exactly. So if you are a caravanner and you do pull over to uh, let normal motorists go by, write to us at I'm a liar. <laughs> BBC yeah. Top Gear, Wood Lane, London W12. Yeah. Um, oh, now, big story this week, of course. Uh, when the Berlin Wall fell over, As it did. we all thought the Russians had come over here by potatoes, shoes, perhaps. But the who knew? They bought the south of France, they bought Chelsea, and this week they bought TVR. Mm. Now, we think, yeah, they have. They have. We think this is a marriage. It's very sad, obviously, because, you know, another British uh, car manufacturer has fallen into foreign ownership. But Russian TVRs. Picture I mean, that. think of the names. You've got a black car, Red Star, TVR Spetsnaz. Yes. <laughs> TVR Molotov. TVR Kalashnikov. TVR Gagarin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the TVR. They've got a really thirsty Andromos. one called the TVR Yeltsin. Think of that. <laughs> See where you're going with that. That's a good name. However, I have thought that there might be one big problem, OK? Now, there's the new TVR coming out very soon, the Cigaris. Have you seen it? I think we've got a picture of it, OK? There it is. Yeah. Now, we've got to road test that. I know. If we don't like it, we've got a problem. See, if you don't like a BMW or a Ford, what happens? Well, they write you a sniffy letter and... A sniffy letter, we'd laugh at it, put it in the bin, yeah. OK? <laughs> if you don't like that, what's going to happen? 
You're going to get a knock on your door at three in the morning and two big blokes and a black car outside. You're right, actually. OK, I'm sliding toward the circular saw. It's got great handling. Turn it off! Turn it off! <laughs> I love the dashboard. Now cut me down! I, it's, it's scary. It is, I but it's, like I will it. get him to road test it. Yes, you can do that one. Yeah, yeah but it's, I don't really like TBRs, though. Actually. OK, fine, Ooh. fair enough. No, actually, <laughs> The late James May there, <laughs> making one of his, uh, no, his final remarks the on, door. on Top Gear. Can I just say, while we were off air, um, some scientists at Lancaster University uh, announced that a train uses more fuel than a car. Well, of course it does. It's enormous. Yeah. Thing is, though, they've worked out that an intercity train uses more fuel per passenger, even when it's full, than a car. So, in other words, a car is more environmentally friendly than a train. Yeah. This is a fact, it's not conjecture. And what's more, you know the new really fast trains that are coming along, the ones that'll do 200 miles an hour? They use more fuel per passenger than an airliner. So trains are rubbish then? Trains the are rubbish. If you want to save the planet, don't go on one. No, <laughs> go in your car. The marvellous thing is, though, is that um, having been presented with this evidence, that trains aren't as environmentally friendly or as economical as we had been led to believe. You would imagine environmentalists would say, crikey, thanks for the heads up, we must shift emphasis, get everyone in their cars. But no, friends of the earth, and I've got the quote here, have now said, as a result of this, the greenest journey is one that isn't made at all. Oh, for oh. crying out loud! <laughs> well, that's just How ridiculous. far do you think mankind would have got if nobody had ever made a journey. <laughs> exactly, that's stupid. Well, it would have been Captain Scott Cook. of the Attic. Yeah. <laughs> I found the source of the Amazon. It was under the dining table. I'll tell you a good one. A um, couple of weeks ago, Hammond announced he wanted to buy a Dodge Charger. Hasn't got enough money, uh, and so we very kindly invited the viewers to send in uh, ideas if they needed something opening, you know, shop or whatever, uh, or jobs doing around the house, and then you could earn something. And we've had... <laughs> A lot. <laughs> a lot of suggestions, OK? Chap here will pay you £30 to paint his mum's fence. <laughs> Is it a big fence? I live in Lincolnshire, so possibly. Don't want to do it. You won't do that? No. Next one. Um, this is from Mistress Goth from the email. Um, she wants you to be her dungeon bitch. <laughs> I'm joking. Dungeon no. bitch, okay? Um, he I'm... says, no, no, she says that you won't have to walk around on your knees. He's so short, he'd be a perfect footrest. <laughs> Again, I'm thinking no. Okay, well, just before you make your mind up, we've got a photograph. We've actually went onto our website, and here's the picture. Oh, yes. my! She is a sturdy girl, isn't she? Um... <laughs> if she's looking for a hat stand, I'm available. <laughs> for 30 quid? You don't want Maybe. this dodge very badly, do you? Well, not that badly, no, to be honest. Uh, no. <laughs>
Michael Schumacher has not won six world champions by driving like a Christian. No. David Coulthard, on the other hand, <laughs> he drives, he's probably got C of E written down the side of his smoke. Come on, boy! And then comes a ten. fish on the back. A fish on the back. Exactly. No, 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 no. Not everybody gets it. Well, I don't. No, there are people at the back leaving. <laughs> well, <there> was... <laughs> Grand Prix today. Yes. All of the world was there. Except one person. Who was at the Eastbourne Motor Show? Yes! <laughs> With Richard Hammond, TV motoring <laughs> presenter. You missed the Grand Prix because you were at the Eastbourne hey, Motor Show. Hey, it was in a With over 300 new cars on display and over 300 brand new models. And nearly what as many people. They? Oh, there, there was commercial there was, vehicles, a wide there. range of exhibitors, a children's play area, and a hamster's wheel for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying a car. I'm, oh, I'm serious. So I need sorry. to get money. The Eastbourne Motor Show. And the organisers who've just cancelled your check. <laughs> <laughs> My car. Oh, fantastic. So you enjoyed that, did you? That's great. I preferred the Grand Prix, but there we go. Thank you. Uh, rest of the news. A uh, big one this week. A Fiat Barchetta. Marvellous little car. Wonderful thing. Little Italian uh, soft top. Went out of production for a while. Stopped selling it in Britain. It's back. Hooray. 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 We've got a picture of the new one here. Is it different? No, the only thing they've done with it, while it was being not being made, is drop the price. It's now £11,995, which is extremely good value That's for a car good. like that. Can I just say, what? it is good value, but I had one of those, loved it, I paid £11,500 for it, they were more expensive then, and a year later I was struggling to sell it for four. Mm. Ouch! They will lose a I'm lot of money. I'm enjoying that, actually. Yeah, I'm enjoying that moment. Not only that, the insurance costs a fortune because it's left-hand drive. I'm just it's still only left-hand drive. It is well. still only left-hand I'm just wanting to say, be careful. It might look cheap, but you will lose money. We ought to talk about a few of the cars that have been launched, uh, or are about to be launched. Uh, first of all, there's a new BMW, and this is interesting because they're going smaller. They've got a car that's going to rival the Golf. It's called the One Series, and we've got a picture of it here. Oh, dear. Mm. Now, James, you've been a defender these last couple of years of BMW's new styling. Uh, what do you think of that? It looks as if a very fat person sat in it. <laughs> it looks, yeah, sag yeah. It's sagged. Prescott. Yeah. <laughs> that is ugly. But, interestingly, it has one thing about it that's worse than its styling. Is it the price? The price? No, nope, it isn't the price. It is the performance. Not to 60, in this, the ultimate driving machine, is 11 seconds. Oh. Well, that's not even moving at all. That's oh. from the 1960s. I know. So just, can we just demonstrate how long 11 seconds is? OK, the new BMW sets off. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> Still in 60. Do <laughs> you know what's even more embarrassing about this? They will sell millions of them. Millions and millions of people will go out and buy it because it's a BMW. You should really have on the back window, moron on board. <laughs> and you've got ages to read it, haven't you, as it crawls past. That's terrible. Remember our pickup truck? Yeah. Of course you remember our pickup truck. It's in the studio here somewhere. It's still running remarkably. What did we do to that? Everything. We Burnt set fire it. to it, drowned it, blew it up on the top of a building, all that sort of stuff. It still works at the end of it. Toyota have launched a new Toyota pickup truck, and they've sort of named it after our experiment. They've called that the Toyota Hilux Invincible. What? They've really named it. So yeah, we they've named, named the car? Them. Sort of, yeah. They acknowledge the role of our TV programme in the naming of that car. That's brilliant news. That's fantastic. Perhaps this would catch on. Perhaps all cars could be named after what we think of them. <laughs> oh, yes. The Nissan 350 Noisy, for instance. The Porsche KN Minga. Would yes, that would be a good name. How about the Rover City Rubbish? Yeah. I like City Rubbish. The BMW 5 Too Ugly. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a good idea, and I think this is going to catch on. Um, I'd like to talk briefly, if I can, about bikes. Steady. It's only just, just quickly, OK? News from America, land of the free. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've announced in Florida that it's now legal 
that's legal for bikers to ride their motorcycles without a crash helmet as long as they can prove they've got $10,000 worth of health insurance. Well, that's just stupid. Apart from anything else, what's the point of insuring Americans' head when there's nothing in it? <laughs> there's another issue as well, because Americans ride Harley Davidson's Mostly they do, yes. The How do you fall off one of those? Well, they're not quick. Exactly. Well, they're not about. Well, you though. might as well just sit in the sedan chair. It's an armchair going at walking speed. You, look, you're not just starting Harley bashing. It's just old and corny. They're great. It's about laid back, boots in the breeze, feeling good. good you thing. arrived this morning here on a Harley Davidson, didn't it's you? My first Harley experience. You yes. came on a, a Moto Guzzi <laughs> motorbike. Yes. For those yes. of you who are intelligent. <laughs> um, I actually took a photograph of these two just after they'd arrived. Would you oh. like to see it? Yeah. yeah. Put, put it up. <laughs> Granted, that's not how we looked in it's our fun minds. To stay at the oh, now, look, look, stay this, but that's an illustration of why we don't want to wear crash helmets. You will kill yourself, but at least when they lay you out at your funeral, you won't have helmet hair. <laughs> I suppose you could all dress up as Red Indians and construction workers. That's another option. <laughs> and well, you don't know, is it? I'll do. finish that. The news, and we're starting with speed cameras. Uh, you see, the government uh, denies that they're there to make money. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Alistair Darling, who is the Secretary of State for Transport, has come up with a wizard new wheeze, which is basically, instead of getting three points, which is what you get now, if you just stray over the limit, from now on we're going to get two points. Well, that sounds fair enough. Well, that sounds fair. No, no, because you know what he said? He says you get two points if you're going from 30 to 35 miles an hour in a 30. If you're going 36, four points. Well, that's, that's more points. It's more points. Right. More points. Well, hang on. It, under the old system, the old three-point system, if you did four offences, you got four fines and you got banned. Exactly. And you lost and, your wife, your home, your yeah. job, your children. And you, you lost everything. on the street. Yeah. But under the two-point system, you get six offences and six fines and then you're yeah. banned. So they make more money out of you before they ban you. It's a cop. Is that right? It well, is a cop. That's true, because you'll get two points, therefore it's 60 quid... To, yeah. And make fun. more money. <laughs> You've kind of got to admire them. I mean, it's crafty. It is. Have we got a picture of Alistair, darling? I think you need to see the, 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 the brains behind. Look at him! <laughs> He's got clip-on hair. It is either clip-on clip on hair, hair or clip-on eyebrows. Oh, <laughs> it's actually a clip-on eyebrow. I tell you what, have you ever been in your local supermarket and they always have employee of the month? <laughs> <laughs> it's him. That man is in charge of all of Britain's transport. And look. Nothing in. Completely empty. <laughs> empty. There's another thing. You know, in the run-up to Euro 2004, uh, a lot of people believed that David Beckham had done some practice uh, and been, you know, training, <laughs> and they put flags on their cars to kind of show their support for yeah. the team, because we were in with a shout, we thought, anyway, of winning. While everyone had flags on their cars, somebody has done some research on how much drag that created. I'm not joking. Yes. Yeah, seriously. He said it, you'd lose with two flags, four brake horsepower, uh, and that means that in the run-up to the tournament, 4.5 million gallons of fuel was wasted by oh, people flags. flying flags. That... I actually know the man who did this survey, OK? I will, I will spare him his blushes, I won't say his name, but I will tell you, he has face hair. OK? <laughs> so I've done a calculation of my own. If a moustache weighs two grams, and we think it does. Sounds fair enough. <laughs> so if you get into a Ford Fiesta, you will increase its weight by 0.000036 of a percent. With you. Which means that you'll increase the fuel consumption, complicated equation here, by 0.00083 miles to the gallon. So over a year, normal mileage, your moustache is costing you an extra five pounds in fuel. <laughs> 
five pounds to run a moustache. That is the kind of information you simply don't get on other shows. This is a <laughs> And furthermore, furthermore, Bill Oddy, David Bellamy, their beards are killing the planet. Yeah, all that weight in the beard. They've got to lose the beards. And it's no good them taking the train. because no, they're just wasting more fuel. They're wasting more fuel. Either have a shave or walk. Look at David Attenborough. He doesn't have a moustache. He's a Sleep. proper environmentalist. <laughs> the news. And we begin this week with a gentle reminder about the Top Gear Motoring Survey 2004. The biggest survey of its kind in the world. If you own a car registered between 2000 on a Y plate and 2003 on a 52 plate, we want to hear from you. We want to know all about your car. Is it reliable? Is your dealer polite? Or maybe you've bought a Mercedes-Benz A-Class. You can use your experience to help others. And also you will be making a very valuable contribution to this program because we'll be bringing you the results of all this in the autumn. The news. Absolutely. Big news this week. Of course, the Motor Show is on at the NEC right now. No, it isn't. Well, if you want to be pedantic, it's if not... If you open. go there now, it'll be shut. <laughs> Look, it's on over the next two weeks. It's oh. open over the next two weeks at the NEC. Yeah, all right, I'll let you have that. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to be going, and the car that I'm going to make a beeline for is this new Noble, right? Now, Noble, small British manufacturer, they've been making a car called the M12 for ages and ages. We love it. Love it to bits. It handles beautifully. Anyway, they've decided now to go after a Ferrari with this. Ooh. Ooh. That is a sexy looking car. It's called the M14, as you can see. Uh, it's 75,000 pounds, does 190 miles an hour. Basically the same as the M12 underneath, same engine and so on, but really a very beautiful thing that. We really like it, but the best thing about it, the best thing, right, is it's got this rev counter, and when you start off, it's blue, the actual needle is blue, then when you get higher up, pink, then when you go in the red zone, it turns red. We've got a film of it. Look, watch this. Look, pink, red. Oh, oh, yeah, that blue, brilliant. pink, red. That's... I mean, I'd pay £75,000 just for that. <laughs> and now the news. And we begin with news of a new Citroen, the C4. Here it is in its uh, most practical five-door guise. It's also going to be available as a rather coupe-like two-door. Prices are going to be for about £12,000. It's going to be on sale in the autumn. The most interesting thing about this car, though, is a new safety system. It can detect when you're in your lane on the motorway. It knows where the white lines are. If you stray out of your lane, it thinks, well, you could be asleep, nodding off or whatever. It vibrates the driver's seat to make I'm sure... Sorry. You're... Hang on. <laughs> if you cross the white line, your seat vibrates. <laughs> She's yes. going to spend her entire time on the hard shoulder. <laughs> Seriously, if you're on the motorway and you're following one of those things and it's, it's straddling the white lines, look in the mirror, she'll have her eyes crossed, like... <laughs> for mile after mile. Pulling women out of bridge parapets. No idea what a big grin on their face. <laughs> if you do want a hot-ish Fiesta, this will... We've got one in the studio, actually. It's called the Fiesta ST. Now, it's a smart-looking little thing. It's arriving later this year. It's going to have a 2-litre, 150-brake horsepower engine, lots of little sporty, sparkly bits on it, kind of a modern take on the XR2, really. Nice right. little thing. has one big problem. Its uh, name, uh, ST. You can't call a car an ST. Why not? Girls? <laughs> what? See, they're laughing. You know. You know. Whisper it to me. I know you'll be embarrassed. Come on, whisper it to me. It's a sanitary towel. <laughs> it's a sanitary towel. <laughs> That's what ST stands for. Every, every girl goes up to the office, can't be an ST. And of course, the worst thing is, if they do a diesel version, it'd be an STD. <laughs> News from Germany, where they have the autobahns, you know, unlimited, no speed limits on those things. Well, the two main political parties in Germany are, are now backing the scrapping of the de-restricted autobahns. They are thinking of imposing a blanket 80 mile an hour speed limit. What are they do? Well, absolutely. I mean, what are they do? Apart from anything else, if they do that, what's the point in having Germany? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yes. What's it for? <laughs> Never mind Germany. Talking of speed, did you see the jet fighter this week? 600 miles an hour, and he crashed into a lamppost. <laughs> Look at that, 54 feet off the ground at 600 miles an hour. Now, the Ministry of Defence is saying that if it can be proved that he was flying too low, and if you hit a lamppost... That's low. It's difficult to defend it. The pilot will lose his wings. Oh, no. We'd just like to say we've got space here for another presenter, and if you are <laughs> the chap who is flying that and you leaves your job, you've got one here any time, mate. <laughs> 
if we get him down here, yeah. bring his plane, we're going to see if we can knock the helmet off a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one word for you there, Jeremy. Yeah. Chin strap. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's going to be very bad. Knock over a speed camera? Yeah. You could have a call. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You probably thought the, uh, the Lamborghini Murcielago couldn't get any more flashy. No? Mm -hmm. Well, it can. Here is the Lamborghini Murcielago Convertible. Ooh, oh, Gentlemen pretty... of the adult entertainment business, your car has arrived, I yeah. think. <laughs> yeah. Dirk Diggler would have one of those, wouldn't he? With leopard skin seats. The interesting thing is, though, that Lambos have always been very, very vulgar. But yeah. I was reading a piece last week by the editor of Tackler magazine, in The Observer. <laughs> Authority. That's, yes, absolutely. Says that vulgarity is now in. So you... I've been ahead of Finally. the wave. You've been, you've it's your time. It's, it's my, here. Because I put electric gates in at my house the other day. I thought, that is disgusting. That is Not the, the other day. He's had him a while and boy has he copped some flack for it. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm going to have big sort of coat of arms put into them in gold nice. as well. Nice. And I'm going to have like a monogram on the bottom of my swimming pool. And one of those. You would, you would love this thing I saw in the States the other week. It was a, it's a sort of small bath with a plug on it. It's a home gold plating kit. Oh! Ooh, so you I, just I said he'd like gold it. plate stuff. Well, what you do, well, the idea is that you take the badges off your, well, your Lexus, frankly, yeah. and yeah. you put them in, plug it in, and ten minutes later, they're gold. Wow! I'd put my dog in it. <laughs> I'd do my hands. I'd have gold hands. I think that would be, honestly, you can really just gold plate about anything. Quid. I should have bought it for no, you. No, it would be a disaster. You'd get drunk and I could do my gates. I could gold plate my gates. Your electric gold, gold plated electric, electric gates. gates. That's pretty vulgar, Jeremy. As somebody said to me when I put them in, well done, Jeremy. You brought a little bit of Cheshire to the Cotswolds. <laughs> From the Italian police, interestingly enough, they've got a new police car. Now, they could have had all sorts of things, I suppose. Being Italian, there could have been a new Fiat Panda, would have been handy, or an Alpha 156, nice. But no, they've got a Lamborghini Gallardo. Look at this! <laughs> now, that is a police car. Yes, but we've been wondering all week why. Because it is impossible to commit a motoring offence in Italy. Well, yeah. I've been stopped by the Italian police. Uh, what for? I was doing about... 110 in an Aston Martin DB7. I overtook the police car on a left-hand bend, and he pulled me up in the next lay-by because I'd left the filler flap open in the garage. <laughs> it, it's a style thing, is what yeah. you're saying. Well, spoiling the lines yeah. of the car. He didn't say anything. He came out and he went up and he went. <laughs> I thought I was going to get a ticket for being. You weren't wearing that shirt because you no, I've been in the car. <laughs> we do on Top Gear rather like the Italians. See, they are good. There's a, and we got one. We got some here. Two Italians. Respect. <laughs> Respect See, to you. What, why aren't they at the Because our policemen, what do they do? They, you see in the London police drive around in maroon Vauxhall Astros. What kind of a message is that giving out to tourists? God, they must be broke. <laughs> <laughs> the Italians who are broke have got Lamborghinis. <laughs> Another car that's coming along in August, it's the new Mini Cabriolet. They're going to be doing versions of it. This is the Cooper version, actually. Well, well, what's the noises for? Do you like it? No. Oh. Heck, I do, actually. I think that looks great. Maybe it's the shirt. <laughs> How much is it going to cost? It's Let's going go. to cost, well, th they'll generally be about 2500 more than the equivalent hardtop. So that the Cooper S, the supercharged version, will be about 17 and a half, 15 and a half for the Cooper, about 13 and a half, I think, for the Mini One. That's well, yeah, horrible. but the Mini isn't, it, it's not a cheap small car, it's an expensive small car, and I like that. It's a metrosexual car. A what? <laughs> metrosexual, it's the new thing, it's for the chap. He doesn't want to be too butch, he doesn't want to have, you know, like a big 4x4, four four. and he spends quite a lot of money on hair products. Don't point at me. He's interested in shirts. <laughs> 
Normally wears cowboy boots, that kind of thing. He's a blend of gay I'm not a and metro not gay. flaming sexual. You are a metrosexual. You... I can see you in one of those. Probably. How would you know what a metrosexual is? I'm not only in touch with my feminine side, I'm in touch with my gay side as well. <laughs> You're probably 17 right. 17 and a half grand's where it all goes a bit wrong for me, I to be honest. I think that's a great little car. I look forward to driving one. So there. I'm yeah. going to be going straight to the TDR stand to see the Cigarist because it is, as far as I'm aware, the first car ever designed by an axe murderer. Look. See? Now, <laughs> clearly he finished it, didn't like it, and then went berserk and cut it to bit. Look at it. It's, it's that is just, I, I hate this roof. It's rubbish. <laughs> that is going to be a fabulous machine. 400 brake horsepower, 195 miles an hour for about 50,000. I'm looking forward to that. You know when BMW bought Rolls Royce? You remember that? Yes. They said, it is entirely English. It will be based in England and it will be staffed and run by English people. Well, the managing director this, this week, a chap called Tony Gott, uh, has, uh, how can I put this, left suddenly and unexpectedly. And he's been replaced by a chap called Karl Heinz Kalpsel. <laughs> Good English name. That's, yeah. that's the seventh Earl Karl Heinz Kalpsel of yeah, Chatsworth, isn't possibly. it? Possibly. And the interesting thing was, when that factory opened, the underground bunker they built down in Sussex, I went to have a look round. And do you remember that film, The Eagle Has Landed, where German paratroopers had taken over a village and were pretending to be English? It was just like you going around going, so tell me, how do you fit the dashboard on? Is it glue or is it screwed on? Can I just say, I like HP sauce. <laughs> Oops, this morning I heard a cuckoo. Because, you know, the way to find them out is what they used to do in the war. MI6, if they thought someone was a German spy, drag him in, say, we think you're a German spy. Good Lord, no, I'm not. I was in Eton and then I was in the guards. You can check on my family history. It's impeccable. All right, then, if you say you're English, what's this? And show them a picture of a squirrel. Ah, it was a marmoset. No, don't be ridiculous. This is much smaller than a marmoset and it has a big bushy tail, so what is it? Well, if it's not a marmoset, it must be a squivivivorgoyle. Because <laughs> no German, no matter how well they speak English, can say squirrel. That's what they should do with the next roles. Call it the squirrel. <laughs> That's what Aston Martin did. When they got a German boss and they knew he was coming, they called the car the Vanquish. <laughs> the latest thing from America, robotic traffic cones. Hey? Yep. These are traffic cones. No, they're not. They're, they're not. small people in no, them. God, no, how do they do that? That's not true. No, they are completely remote control. The idea is that they go up to some roadworks and they set themselves out, and that way, I'm not making this up, that way road workers don't get run over by cars when they're that, putting out cones. That's rubbish. That is it's rubbish. Not. It is, I it's know why they've idea. done it in America. It's because if you drive into an American, let's be honest, they're not small people. <laughs> car. All those road workers going, look at this. Under here I got me a Nissan, got me a Honda, got me a Humvee under here, got me a Mitsubishi in my butt creep. That's what it is. That's ridiculous. How much no, are actually, they? You know, I think this is a very important invention and it could change the face of British drunkenness. Because, <laughs> no, wait for it, if you come out of the pub and you put one of these on your head, you'll end up in the middle of a contraplex system. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But how much work? are they? Well, they're very expensive. They've got sat-nav in them and all that sort of thing. But they think if they make lots of them, they'll get the price down to less than 200 quid each. 200 quid each? Good. You need yes. 2 million yes. just for road 28 work. billion of them. No, not for roadways. I've put an order in for a dozen. My thinking is, if I'm going into town the next day, I send me cones off in the middle of the night <laughs> to reserve the parking space for me. Hey, that's brilliant. The build quality is appalling. There are shanty towns in South Africa that are built better than Renault's. I know what I mean. The problem is on the interior mainly, isn't it? Yeah, oh, That's it's appalling, I mean. yeah. You know when you get one of those big tins of biscuits at Christmas, family yeah. assortment, when you've eaten all the biscuits, there's like a really, really floppy plastic well, it's like corrugated paper, yeah. yeah. Well, to Renault, that's a dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> all they do is they just fit the speedo where the jammy dodgers were and stick it in the car and you just you off. <laughs> We like VW Coupes, they're very good at them. You had a Sirocco. Two. I had a Sirocco. We like the Corrado. Well, there's a new one coming. Here it is. It's a fabulous looking thing. It's actually one of these folding metal roofs. Yep. Um, it's going to be, we reckon, about £20,000 on sale next year. That looks fabulous. Two litre turbo engine, kind of a Golf GTI with that body. As you know, Chrysler of America these days are owned by Mercedes-Benz, yep. and they've come up with a new car. It's the 300C. Now, it's based on the old Mercedes E-Class, but... 
It's got this American body and it's got an American engine. It's a 5.7 litre V8 Hemi. Mm. Nice. Lovely. Well, it's, I must confess, I look at it in black particularly, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks I mean, fabulous. I and like this could be what, 29995? Just under the 30 same... grand, same as a 5 Series BMW. So that's pretty good, we think. I like the look of that. Looking that's forward to that. Uh, uh, well, it'll be good as long as they don't make it too sporty. Well, I don't like, I mean, I like proper sports cars, but I've never really been very comfortable with sports saloon. When you get a sports saloon, you get, the tyres are too big, so the handling goes to pot. The suspension's too firm, so the ride is spoiled. And the seats are too hard, so you get big bum ache after a while. And it just <laughs> spoils a perfectly good car. You are aware this is top gear. It's not songs of praise you're appearing <laughs> on. Yeah. 